Hey everyone, it's Sherry Vegas here and in this tutorial today I'm going to be showing you how you can work with this new Jessamite product that honestly I am absolutely obsessed over and the best part about it is there's no sanding required. In this tutorial today, I'm going to show you how you can work with the AC730, which is really different from your AC100 or any other kind of Jessamite slash eco-friendly resin products. It's got quite a gritty gravelly base and it also comes pre-colored. There are 11 different colors available in the AC730. They all give you a different sort of stone finish. If you're not a big fan of any of those colors and you want to kind of go really bright, you can still add jessamite pigments into it and I'll show you how you can do that later in the tutorial. Now, the ratio for this is very different from all of the other eco resin products out there and it's a five to one ratio which means five parts powder to one part liquid. So today I'm doing 125 grams of powder and then I'm gonna be doing 25 grams of liquid. And it does say that you need to measure this out by weight and not by volume. I also always measure my powder and liquid out in separate jugs, just because I am very bad at maths and tend to muck up my measurements, especially because I work with epoxy resins and different jessamites and they all have different ratios, like one to one, two to one, 2.5 to one, and this one which is five to one so I always like to measure out and double check my measurements before I do mix it in because I have made mistakes in the past so it's always good to measure out separately with this product I like to add a little bit of liquid in first give that a mix until I've got that sort of crumbly texture and then I add the rest of my liquid in when you do start to mix it up it honestly doesn't seem like there is enough liquid but trust the process because all of a sudden you'll see that it will turn into quite a thick paste it's also a lot easier to mix than the AC100. I find with the AC100 I am really mixing hard because it just gets so many lumps but because this has got a completely different texture it mixes within like five minutes and turns to this sort of consistency. It's so much easier. This is one of my pro tips when you are working with Jessamite especially if you struggle with getting tons of bubbles in your product is pour a little bit down or use a paintbrush, spread that across the surface area, get it into all of the cracks, make sure everything is really covered well. I did switch to a little paintbrush to just get into that edge of the mold. And then you wanna give it a really, really good tap. It's gonna be a lot easier for the bubbles if you have a really thin layer to start with for them to come up when you do shake and tap your mold than if you just pour everything all at once because it won't be able to travel up easily. You can use this technique on all of the types of jessamites or any other sort of eco acrylic resins, especially if you're doing terrazzo, because I do find when I do my terrazzo pieces, I get so many air bubbles because the air bubbles get trapped around the terrazzo pieces. So by adding just a little bit in and giving that a really good tap and using a paintbrush to get into all of those corners, you're going to end up with a lot less bubbles. Another difference from this product to other sort of acrylic eco resins is this takes around four to five hours to set over the normal like half an hour to 45 minutes. And that's just me dropping my pigment into my next batch of jessamite, but it's all good because it was just the powder. I'm gonna be using this water-based pigment, which is designed for jessamite and it's from Art Tree Creation and it's called Flamingo. I'm doing about five drops and I personally prefer to put my liquid colors into my lip liquid because it blends out easier than dropping liquid into powder because obviously liquid into liquid just mixes really well. And then I'm just going to be following the exact same process as last time. The only thing that is different this time is that I've added my color into my liquid before I've started to mix. Now you will find that if you do use any of the ones with colored bases, so this one is silver granite, which pretty much sets with a white base. And that's why I picked it because I can then pretty much customize it to whatever color I want. But some of them are black or terracotta or pinks that will affect whatever other color you add into it. So my recommendation is if you do want to go bright colors and use this product then definitely go for the silver granite but obviously you can't add black into this because the black granite through here you won't be able to see if that makes sense 
the things that I really do like about this AC730 over sort of other eco-friendly acrylic resins is this is designed to be really durable and strong and you can use it for pieces for indoor or outdoor. So this is a great product to use if you're going to be doing plant pots and it's also fire resistant. So it's a great product to use if you're going to be making um, pots that you're going to be pouring candles into. It's a lot more tougher and stronger than the AC100. So I do like it because you can do other items that you wouldn't be able to do with your normal sort of eco resins. Something that is important to note with this particular product is your colors will come out a little bit duller than what they normally do in your AC100 or any other sort of acrylic eco resin products. So you can add a bit more pigment to make them a bit more vivid and brighter, but the normal amount that you would use, you need to kind of increase that for this particular type of jessamite. You'll also find that if you are gonna be using any of these products outdoors, that the colors might fade over time due to sunlight. So you do need to seal them with a UV stabilizer um, sealer just to make sure that the colors don't change if any of these products are going to be in direct sunlight. I let my two coasters set for around four to five hours and this is what they look like when you first pull them out of the mold. You can see I've got no bubbles and you can see a slight bit of the granite coming through and you get a really slick and smooth surface. To reveal the granite texture on my coasters, I'm going to be taking that top layer off and we're going to be doing that using a solvent. So you can either use the acid etch, which is from Jessamite, but unfortunately I've not been able to find it anywhere in Australia, which is honestly typical for Australia. So instead I'm gonna be using white wine vinegar, just the normal stuff that you get from the grocery store. This does take a little bit longer than obviously using the acid etching, but it still works the same. What I like to do is just fully submerge my item into my vinegar, so any sort of container, and then you just wanna leave that to sit for anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes to give the vinegar time to work. If you are using the acid etching product, just note that it will take anywhere from a minute to four minutes. It's very fast and you don't need to fully submerge the item you can just brush it on really lightly because it's a lot stronger this is at the 20 minute mark where I was happy to remove my item from the vinegar and then just use an old toothbrush or any sort of scrubbing brush something that's abrasive to just help reveal a little bit more of that granite finish this took about sort of two minutes in total um, and I much prefer this over having to sand back jessamite I also just wanted to say the reason why I'm wearing gloves is not to do with safety because I am just using household cooking vinegar, but just because I didn't want my hands to smell vinegary for the rest of the day. I don't think anyone really particularly wants to smell like vinegar. So that's the reason why I've got gloves on because obviously they're getting submerged in the vinegar quite a bit doing this technique. To stop the chemical reaction of your vinegar or your acid etch, all you need to do is just dunk the item in water and wash that off and then that will stop eating away at the product. And then with my pink one, all I did was just repeat the steps. So dip it into the vinegar, let that sit for about 20 minutes and then just use my toothbrush to remove any of the excess to reveal the granite from underneath. Now it's super important to seal your products correctly because they will be quite porous. You wanna make sure that they're fully dry before you do start sealing them. Look for a waterproof and UV protected sealer. The one I got is just from a hardware store and it's designed to seal concrete and grout because I wasn't able to get the FlexiGuard sealer which is the one that is from Jessamite. Once again, cause it's not sold in Australia. If you do have access to the FlexiGuard sealer, it's recommended to put it in a spray bottle and spray it across the top of your pieces and repeat that process two to three times to make sure it's completely sealed. On my pink coaster, I'm gonna just be using the normal AC100 sealer from Jessamite and I just wanna see if there's any sort of difference in finish. I will also give you guys an update on the sealer that I got from my hardware store and see if that is any good because I've not used it before, but it is a waterproof concrete sealer so I'm assuming it's going to work. I hope all of you guys enjoyed this tutorial and it's explained this product a bit more. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. Would you use this or do you like the original sort of acrylic resin slash jessamite or do you like this sort of like textured effect? 
I really like this because it doesn't involve sanding because I absolutely hate sanding. So I think I will definitely start using more of this particular Jessamite product in the future. And if you are brand new in working with Jessamite or any sort of acrylic slash eco resins, I do have a playlist up here that you can go and check out and that will be a really helpful guide to get started working with this medium. But I definitely will be creating some more tutorials in the future. If you have any other handy tips or tricks working with this product or just Jessamite in general, don't forget to leave them down in the comments below. Um, it's always helpful for me to see them in case I've missed something or for everyone else um, that is subscribed to see those helpful tips and tricks as we are a community here and it's all about sharing our knowledge. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to check out that playlist and give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. But Thank you guys so much for watching.